Hello and welcome to The Daily Message. Today is Wednesday, February 2nd, and I am Morgan. I am the intern pastor at Holy Cross. We're so glad you found us today. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel and donate to Holy Cross with the links below. We greatly appreciate that. And for our devotional time today, we will be looking at the Gospel of John. John 1, verses 1 to 5. So we will get to that in just a moment. We'll focus on verse 1, but we'll look at all of uh, those opening verses of John's Gospel. So we'll get to that in our devotional time. But I want to start with the Disney quote today, because our Disney quote is simply this. Do you want to build a snowman? It is a snowy day in southeast Michigan, if you are in the area. The snow started coming down early this morning. We're predicted to get all kinds of snow in the, over the next two days. Uh, so we do have a snow day. As a reminder that uh, when Livonia Public Schools close, the church office is also closed, and any church activities that would be happening in the building today are also postponed. Um, so I am coming to you from home today in the comfort of my own home with my favorite mug, my cat mug with the glasses and my tea. Um, and yeah, glad to be with you today. Uh, it's nice to watch the snow fall out my window and, and work from home for a day. So uh, what else is happening at church? Um, if you were not at church on Sunday, or maybe you didn't watch the live stream, uh, CJ Clark from Living Waters Ministries, the camps, uh, was with us and preached and shared some awesome information about what's happening at camp this summer and some exciting projects that they're doing there. Um, one thing he mentioned is that camp is free this summer for all participants that come, which is really exciting. Uh, they're so excited, especially after two years of not being able to have in-person programming because of COVID that they can now offer camp free to all campers this year, which is really, really awesome. And on Sunday, he also let us know about some new projects that they're doing and some awesome new cabins that they're building and things going on there. And uh, CJ invited us as Holy Cross to be part of that uh, by raising $10,000 to go toward those projects in camp. So if you didn't get a chance to see CJ's sermon, it is up on our YouTube channel from this past Sunday. You can go check that out and see all the awesome stuff that Living Waters is doing. So with all that being said, we're still getting some things in order on um, how we're going to track that because we would like to track it. We'd like to have a board with a thermometer to show where we're at and when we reach our $10,000 and celebrate that. Uh, but if you're super gung-ho after hearing CJ's sermon and hearing about this awesome opportunity to donate, you can do that now. You can either uh, drop off a check or donate to the church office with designated uh, for Living Water Ministries, um, or you can donate to them directly online. Their website is simply elcalivingwater.com.org. Dot com, I believe. But ELCA Living Water, you can donate there directly. We do ask that if you do donate to their website directly, you just send a note to the church office and let us know so we can include it in the count when we're keeping track of where we're at with our goal. So more to come on that. We're still getting our ducks in the row there, but uh, note that, uh, be aware of that, and uh, we hope that we can reach our goal and help out Living Water this summer and all of the great ministry that they will do at camp. Uh, a reminder that Sacred Conversations uh, are coming up. The deadline to register for that is February 7th. I believe there are still a few spots left um, to register, and then those sessions will begin February 21st. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. And a preview to Sacred Conversations, on Sunday, February 13th at 9 a.m., we'll have a faith forum between worship, uh, and that will be both in person and on Zoom. So you'll have the option. We'll put a link out there for anyone who wants to Zoom in. And we'll be talking about the Eight Mile Wall, also called the Burwood Wall or sometimes the Wailing Wall. Uh, and we'll be talking about um, what the Eight Mile Wall is. It's a wall here in Detroit that was used to separate um, a white neighborhood from a black neighborhood. We'll be talking about the history of that and the story of that and impact and 
how it is affecting us today. So that will kind of kick off our um, sacred conversations and uh, give you kind of a preview of what those conversations may look like for sacred conversations. So that will be February 13th on a Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, Zoom or in person. And uh, we'll get that link out to you. Hope you can join us for that conversation. Uh, Lent is also upon us or coming up pretty quickly. Uh, Lent starts on March 2nd with Ash Wednesday. Um, and I believe the theme is beginning to be rolled out. So you can find a link in your email for the daily message today for the February newsletter. And plastered right on the front is the theme for Lent 2022. We're really excited about that. I won't give it away now. I'll have you go check out the newsletter and we'll roll that out a little more. Uh, but, but check that out. You can see the theme there. Uh, we're really excited to return to in-person worship for Ash Wednesday, for Midweek Wednesday worship, um, for Monday Thursday and Good Friday and Easter Vigil and all of that fun stuff. Uh, we have special devotionals that will be coming out. Uh, we'll have some opportunities uh, for sacred conversations. That's one piece of this theme for Lent and also um, some special ways that you can uh, practice some new spiritual practices and discover new ways to um, connect with yourself and connect with God this season of Lent. So check that out. Continue to pay attention for more to come there. There's a lot happening for Lent that we're really excited about. Okay, I think that covers all the things happening at church and coming up. Uh, let's turn to our devotional now. We're in the Gospel of John, but before we dive into that, I want to just tell you a little bit about the Bible that I'm using. Uh, this Bible has my name on the front. This Bible was a gift to me for my first communion. Um, I, I got it after my first communion when I was a kid. My grandparents gifted it to me, and this has been a very special Bible to me ever since. It's my personal Bible that I use for personal devotion and reading and study. I keep it at home. Um, it's a really special one to me, um, and I'm curious. I, I know everybody or, you know, a lot of people have special Bibles to them or Bibles that have a story that they got from somebody special um, like mine or, uh, you know, that has just been a companion to, the, to you. And so I invite you, we haven't done this in the daily message before, but if you're able to, whether you're watching on YouTube or you see us on Facebook, uh, drop a comment. I'm curious to hear if you have a special Bible or a special devotional book or something that you use um, that has a story or that's just really special to you. Uh, so you can drop that in the comments. I'd love to hear your stories about where you got it, um, who gave it to you, um, why it means so much to you. But this one really means a lot to me. Um, and this is one that I have, I have treasured for a long, long time and will treasure forever. Um, so uh, I'm curious to hear that. Drop it in the comments. Um, and for our devotion today, like I said, we'll be in John 1, verse 1. And there is a professor at uh, Trinity Lutheran Seminary, where I am a student, uh, Professor Mar Dr. Mark Allen Powell, who is famous at the seminary for starting his New Testament classes by holding up a Bible and saying, this is not the word of God. And you can imagine seminarians, future pastors, future ministry leaders, kind of cringing in their seats going, what do you mean, Dr. Powell, this is not the word of God. Of course, it's the word of God. Then he asked them all to turn to John 1. So let's turn to John 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. So, who is the word of God? The word of God is Jesus. Which is what the Gospel of John will cover and talk about for the rest of the gospel. Now, I just talked about this with our confirmation students last week, and I did the same thing 
I said, there's a professor that holds the Bible up and says, this is not the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. But we also call this the word of God, right? Uh, but the Bible is also a complicated book, right? There's lots of tough passages in here, uh, really hard, some hard things, some things that have uh, made me really wrestle with my faith and with who God is and how God is working in the world. And in those moments, I can remember that um, you know, the Bible is a book that was inspired by God. We just talked about this with confirmation. The Bible is inspired by God, which means that God breathed into it, that the Holy Spirit was active, and it was also written by humans. But God inspired that. So because it was written by humans, it does not mean it's perfect, but it does mean that God's hand is in it somehow. But we can also remember that the true word of God is Jesus. And Jesus teaches us who God is and what God wants for the world through Jesus's ministry, through Jesus's actions, through Jesus's love. And we can remember that today. So when you're thinking about your Bible, your special Bible or your special devotional or whatever you have, and you think about the ways that these words have really shaped your faith, maybe challenged your faith, uh, you can also return to John 1, that Jesus is the word of God among us to guide us, to teach us, to show us who God is in the world. And there is much to be thankful for that. So I invite you into a time of prayer. Uh, let's go ahead and get comfortable in whatever prayer position is comfortable for you. I often say for me that usually means um, my feet are flat on the floor. Um, my back is straight. So an attentive position, but a comfortable position. Uh, you can fold your hands, you can bow your head. I usually like to have my hands open uh, to receive whatever God has for me today. So whatever prayer position is comfortable for you, I invite you into that, and let's pray. Holy God, word of life, we're so thankful that you give us scripture scripture that challenges us, scripture that makes us question, but also scripture that helps us know more about you. And we thank you for giving us Jesus, who is the true word of God and word of life. We thank you that we have Jesus as our example, that we have Jesus to guide us in life, and that Jesus is with us as the word made flesh in the world. Be with us today. Keep us safe. Keep all who are in the path of storm safe today, especially those experiencing these winter conditions on the East Coast and in the Midwest. May you surround us with your word and your truth so that we may grow in faith in you. Amen. Thanks for joining me today for this daily message. Remember, be smart, stay safe, especially in the snow, and love absolutely everybody. See you later.